So we are given a cylindrical surface on which the surface charge density is varying as sigma naught cos phi. We need to find the electric field on the z axis. So this is the x axis, this is y, and this is the cross section of our cylinder. This is the angle phi which, is, which it is making with the x axis. So first thing you can immediately see is cos phi is positive in this right half. So charges are positive on the right half. And cos phi is negative here, so charges are negative. Also charge buildup will be more when phi is zero. That will be maximum surface charge density. And it should be zero when phi is 90 degree. So charge distribution is going to look something like this. So from symmetry, you can already take a guess that field should be towards left. Now let's get the value of it. So we'll take an elemental wire here. See, this is a cylinder which is going inside and outside the plane. So if you take an element like this, that element is a long wire. So this is an elemental wire going in the plane. So charge on one meter of this wire. So at an angle phi, we are given sigma is sigma naught cos phi. So we'll take one meter of this wire and thickness of this wire is rd phi. So area of that wire will be rd phi into one meter. So charge on one meter will be sigma dA. Sigma is sigma naught cos phi and dA is rd phi into one. And charge on one meter is nothing but lambda of this wire, this elemental wire. So let's call it d lambda because it is a small value. So d lambda on this elemental wire is sigma naught r cos phi d phi. So now we can easily calculate the field because of that wire. We know the formula that is 2k lambda by r. So we put the value of d lambda here. This becomes 2k sigma naught cos phi d phi. Now due to symmetry, you can see that for this element field is like this. If I take a symmetrical element here, field will be like this. So vertical components will cancel out and only horizontal component will remain. Something which we saw from symmetry when we started this problem as well. So E net is integral of DE cos phi. So we are only taking cos phi, the horizontal component. And limits will be complete from 0 to 2 pi. So this becomes, so this cos phi from here and this cos phi will square up and square of cos square d phi cos phi uh, and cos square phi d phi integral from 0 to 2 pi is pi. It's a standard result. So our answer becomes 2k pi sigma naught or sigma naught by 2 epsilon.